Hi there, I'm in the trenches, but um, today I'm not cooking in the trenches, no. I was tagged by the Norwegian one, Magnus, or Magnus, and he tagged me about uh, my three favorite bushcraft knives. Yeah. Well. That's not so easy, because I don't know what bushcraft is. Yeah, I can, I, I can find the definition of it, but I don't consider me as a bushcrafter. I just like to be outdoors. I do my things, and you know, actually, that's not my cup of tea. I don't like that uh, taking stuff. Uh, it's not my, my style, not my thing, you know? But for some reason, this time I agreed, so I say yes, it's all right, and now I'm sitting here. What's my favorite knife? I don't know. Uh, I have more knives, so I went up the attic to find some knives between all my stuff. Well, one of my favorite knives I carry in this box. This is a very useful knife for me. I can slice my bread, I can do the butter on the bread, I can eat with it, I can flip over my pancakes, I can do the, a lot of things with this knife. And you see this, this end, and some people think, what the hell is that? Why, what is the reason for, for this? Well, I can hang it to something, but that was not the main reason. The main reason is, is folded, otherwise it does not fit in my mess tin. So that's the main reason. Very useful knife. That's one knife. Well, and then I found a very old knife in my box. That's what I call the survival knife. Don't know why, but it's a knife like this. Very nice shape. Looks very sturdy, but for some reason I'm not happy with this knife. I could do nothing with it. Some storage for fishing hooks or matches or tinder or things like that and you can strike your matches along this side along this side theoretically in the real or in practice it never worked but it looked nice. This is very smooth. Too smooth for me. And in the pouch. Magnifying glass to start a fire when there is sun, if there is sun. Well, this was a very old knife, never used it very much, didn't like this one. Well, another knife is a knife that I've used very much when I was in the Navy.
I think it's a Spanish product, Spanish made in Spain. Here's an Explorer knife. Yeah. That looks. I've, yeah, I've used this a lot. Very good. You see, you can hold it with my hands and use my hands without losing the knife. You see, very useful. Yeah, it's a heavy one. And so this is very handy. And makes a lot of noise. Well, here's a compass to find my direction. It's a very small one, just for emergency purposes. Yeah. And then, there's a small container with fishing hooks, uh, tinder, purifying uh, tablets for the water. Um, there's a Morse code. Can you see? There's a Morse code on it. Could be handy, but I know the Morse code because that was my job. I was in communications, I was a telegraphist, so I did the Morse code every day. Like, ta 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 that means kababus in Morse code. So a very useful container, small container here. It goes in here. But other thing, I can remove the handle. And then it is very handy to make a spear. And you take a long piece of wood, put it in here, and then you have a spear. Take a proper stick, put it firm on top, and now you have a spear. This is just an example, but when you take a proper stick, you have a real spear. And you can secure this with uh, a rope or something, or a line. It fits very firm. Now you have a spear. Ta-da! So that's very handy. Well, we put it all together again. Other thing, nice thing of the handle, you can hold it like this, and now you have a hammer. It can be useful. And you see. It's all the grease here, the grease, and very small hole in here. I don't think you can see it, but there's a very small hole, and you can put through um, a fishing line, and when when you have some weight, you can use this as a sextant. Or when the line is hanging here with a weight, you can read the angle. And then you can use that for shooting stars or something, or measure the height of a tree. When you know the distance and the angle, you can measure the, the height of a tree, or a mountain, or whatever. It can be handy. You see, this is, this is a sword here. You look through this to here. Just like you do with a rifle, you look at your target, and then, then you read the angle 
the line with this degrees. It can be handy. When you lose your GPS or when you, whenever your batteries of the GPS are empty, you can you can use this system for shooting stars <laughs> to make your position. Like the old sailors did in the old days. Yeah. And then you see this hole here. There's a hole in it. Well, handy. Like a patch. You see this here. And now you can cut wires. It works, yeah, it really works. I've used it. You see? Put a wire in here, between here, cut it. Yeah, it works. And I know, because it cost me a black thumb, a black nail. Of course, I always do it. This way is the wrong way. It works. And at the end, and on top, screwdriver. Always handy. <laughs> yeah, I like this knife. And here, on the back. Originally, he was a mirror. Mirror for signaling in the sun to attract attention from help or something. And for shaving yourself in the morning. <laughs> Never done that. So. Explorer and I. I like that. Used it a lot in my navy time. Another knife that I like very much is a small one in this pouch. It's nice. It's uh, Saint George, the patron Saint George. He fights the dragon. So this is. Uh, Symbolic for me, and this is from my uncle who, who served in the army many many years ago, and he served in the regiment of Saint George. So to honor my uncle, this is on my knife, on my pouch. Well, inside, here's your well-known Swiss army knife. With all the knife, the knife, all the tools, I think you you know them. I think you 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 know what's in it. Uh, screwdrivers, can opener, tin opener, everything. Uh, Well, I think you, you, you know what's, what's in all here. Very useful. I always carry this with me because of the tools. It's very handy, it's very useful and small. And of course, in the pouch, there's a liner, a compass. Can be useful. Other side, or that's down to sharpen the knives, and a pencil. A 
like this now. Use that very much, very often. Yep. And not knife. This knife was a gift from a friend of mine. He, he did not forge the knife himself, but he made the handle. And I think it was cherry wood and ebony or the antlers of a deer. Not sure. Anyway, he made this, this handle and he made the pouch to carry it in. Nice knife. For me, this is a little bit too small. I like it a bit larger. I like it a bit larger, but nice. Another knife. It's not a real knife, but this I forged myself. Just a piece of metal, and I forged this myself. And never finished it. This one. I think it's a shame. I should finish this. Yeah. Oh, it can cut a bit sharp, but it needs a handle. And never made time to finish this one. So I've never used this. Well. And then there is another knife that I've used very often when I was in Navy, especially when we uh, walked up the mountains in the jungle in uh, the Caribbean. And sometimes we need to uh, to cut our path. And then I use my machete. That does the job. Yeah. Can you see? I think it's uh, made in um, in Brazil. Tramontana or Tramontina, Brazil. This one is nice. Yeah. Cha 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 cha. Well, I've used this a lot in Navy to get my wine, to get myself a wine for the platoon. A friend of mine had made this shaft by hand, it was handmade, with a little sign of Australia and a kangaroo. But the knife. It's from our navy dog. Yeah. And then of course, my most favorite knife that I've used uh, for many, many years, I think about 40 years, was my uh, scouting knife. I got it when I was in the Boy Scouts, but that knife broke two years ago when I was in Norway. Yeah, I was splitting the wood and did that very oft, very many times, but that time, one time too many. So the knife broke. And what? So I had to replace that knife and I bought this Mora knife. Very cheap, not very special. But that old scouting knife 
is replaced by this one. So I can always carry this one on my trips, on my canoes. This, so I think this is one of my three favorites. I think everyone knows there's a fire steel on there. So yeah, I like this knife. This is a useful knife. Yeah. So this is one of my favorites to die. It's light, handy. It doesn't uh, attract all the attention from the authorities, for the police, when I walk with this one on the street. So I like this. When I walk on the street with this one, <laughs> that attracts attention from the authorities. Yeah? And then, This is my last knife that I always carry with me when I have my ringers built. It says Buck Winchester. I bought it in um, Australia. And small knife like that. Small knife like that. always carry this knife. Only disadvantage, it cannot be locked. So when something happens, it's always a chance I cut my finger. Even this one, this knife is not locked. So it's not, not, not very safe. But yeah. Well, those are my knives, but when you ask me for my three favorites, well, for this moment, for now, these are my three favorites that I always carry with me on my canoe trips. Anyway, now I want to take to all the channels. And the first one is uh, Laurent Guzu, or you're talking a lot of French, so perhaps it is uh, Laurent Guzu, but let's keep it in English Laurent Guzu, aka Lynx. Um, I think you are from Canada. Um, well, Laurent is a bloke, He's, uh, he likes outdoor. He likes being outdoor, and um, what he does is um, he has a lot of uh, he he has a lot of uh, reviews um, uh, about uh, vintage stuff like uh, old burners or things like that, and and he does cooking. I think he lives in an urban area, but nevertheless he goes out and. Um, he shows the nature around where he lives, and nature is not that far away, you know, and that's what he shows. And he does a lot of cooking. Yeah, he cooks uh, nice recipes and in uh, old stuff and new stuff and everything, all kinds of gear. And he tries, he tries a lot. So, Lauren, Laura, I know you have done. Um, a video before about that uh, Mora knife, the same as I carry, the same as I have. But um, now I take you for the three favorite bushcraft knives. Your three favorite bushcraft knives. Yeah. And the other channel I want to take is uh, Martin Outdoors. Martin is a bloke from the Netherlands. Uh, he's Dutch. And but he also likes being outdoor, being in nature. And um, he's very good in, in making foil. Right? Yeah, he has that uh, 
that special thing and and then he has uh, some tinder and uh, he makes uh, sparks and uh, making embers and, and and then in the tinder and then he blows in it and then it gets fire and the, the flames and then he's burning his fingers and and, and and then he has a foil yeah I can't do that he's good at that yeah so Martin for you to challenge uh, your three favorite bushcraft knives okay Martin Laurent see you and then yeah, and last but not least I want to thank uh, the Norwegian one Magnus for taking me I think he's a nice bloke he's a very quiet bloke quiet bloke he, he lives in Norway I think in the south of Norway and um, he likes being outdoors and being in the nature sometimes hiking sometimes in his canoe um, but he has eye for detail he has eye for the nature and he likes it to for him it's fun to be outdoor I can see that yeah and he likes to share his experiences with uh, with the other people so check his channel and uh, well thanks for watching and I'll see you next time oh by the way uh, it's a long time now but last time in my cooking in the trenches uh, series I promise you to explain where this area got its name from Montfalan um, well there's not much time left to do that now but I will do that in the next um, cooking video.